All right, am I live? <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, sorry, I tried to start a little earlier, but then I forgot to click the go live button. Uh, but I hope it's fine. Uh, if you're here, please let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me okay. Because now I'm not sure. Let me just do a, a little refresh here and see if it's working. Yeah, it looks like it's working to me at least. So yeah, let me know where you're watching from and everything. How are you today? Everything is okay? Uh, yeah, you know, nothing's perfect, but <laughs> we can make it. So I'm so excited to do this class today. Uh, one thing I want to tell you, it's, it might be long. So either I'm going to stop at like one hour. Usually my classes are one hour long. Uh, if it takes too much more than one hour, then I'll probably cut in two and then we finish next time, but I'll try to do, um, everything today okay so basically what we're gonna do today is this uh this dress it's a commercial pattern like i don't know if you joined my last class and uh i promised that i would do a commercial pattern and then i was at joanne's store the other day and i found this one there was like on the sales uh bin and then i'm like oh, i could make this one it's, it has to do with my designs and you know it's like i like those designer ones so i think that would be would be fun to make and uh so but it's kind of, there's a lot of gathering that's why i think it will take a little longer okay than usual and what else um let me do a close up then we'll, we'll start talking about oh now one thing i want to tell you is if you i don't know if you're getting my emails and everything but or if you've been to my classes before um usually i send emails to let you know about the classes and uh when i do classes sometimes i i have patterns and now I, I'm learning how to do patterns in PDF so I can share. I'm gonna sell patterns, but I'm also gonna share patterns for free. And it's just a simple thing that I can just send you like simple patterns. I'll just share with you. And for that, I created this channel on Telegram. I don't know if you're uh, used to this thing, Telegram. It's not, it's like a WhatsApp sort of thing. So basically just, it's not, it's not gonna be like spam or anything. You just join there. And then when I have a pattern, that's where I'm gonna, because it's a place where I can share PDF. And also I'll do the notifications for the class as well. Cause some people are telling me they're not receiving my emails. And you know, emails are sometimes goes to spam box and everything. So if you wanna be in touch and if you wanna get the patterns, the way to do that will be uh, in this Telegram uh, channel. And I just left the, the, the link below here and then you can just uh go there and join okay um yeah so let's get started let me just do the close up here so you can oh, where it is you can see the table yeah so this is our pattern let's talk about the materials i you know i was looking for fabric i kind of want to do the only fabric that i thought would be really nice to do that the ones that i already had for before from before would be a linen but the only linen light enough that I have here is black and I didn't think black would be a good color to show it to you because you it would be too dark for you to see the details and everything so then I, I have this one which is not my favorite I just I got this at the thrift store because it was very cheap and it's cotton and I thought I could use to do you know it's like a it's not bad but it's it, it might be a little like pajama like <laughs> uh and especially in this but i thought it would make sense because of the texture of this fabric and also the lightness of it you know the weight and so i think it has like some body to it so i think it would be nice to make the volume of this dress that's why i chose this one and then um scissors uh measuring tape you might need to take measurements i don't know if you're used to do this i'm not going to show you exactly how i start everything from you know with the pattern but i'm going to tell you how i did it uh but so you know usually you when you choose a pattern you got to choose uh from your body measurements i usually choose by bust and then from there and i usually i like oversized clothes for myself so if i'm going to make it for myself i just get a, like a larger pattern uh, size this one would be the correct for me would be small but i'm I'm making the medium one because i like large and so yeah basically that's it make sure that you have enough fabric for it this one you'd need about three yards in a little bit and uh, yeah so that's what it requires the fabric is about three yards 
and then a little bit of elastic because th they put elastic in the front and the back. And so I got this, which is very thin as the elastic. I, I either have, I only had like this one or a wide one. So, <laughs> so I chose this one. This is like I have for masks, right? And oh, and this, this yarn thing that I remember last class. Oh, you guys are done. Let me see. Oh, hi. You like the fabric? Car you are Caroline? Caroline? Oh, thank you. <laughs> At least someone likes it. Poor thing. You know, it's not bad, but you know. Let's see how it's going to turn out. So yarn, I usually have, I don't, I learned this recently as if you saw my classes a while ago. Um, it's for gathering and it's like wonderful. And that's the one I like. I was wear, I was using like wool yarn, like acrylic yarn, you know, like knitting yarn, but it's too wide, like it's too thick. This one's wonderful. It's similar to, I think it's for crochet or uh, you can have, you can get those like em embroidery yarns too, the thick one. Okay, that works. And then scissors and everything. Okay, so let's talk about the pattern itself, right? It is, um, so the pattern, when you get a commercial pattern, it comes in a big, uh, hi Rob. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Rob is my husband, guys. He's like in New York now, and I'm in Vermont, so thank you, Rob. <laughs> um, so, you know, this, a, a commercial pattern, you probably know how it is, but it usually comes in this huge le uh, leaves, right, like uh, paper, and then you just have to choose um, which size, which size is yours, and then you trace some patterns are the, only one size, and some patterns are mult multiple sizes. And when it's multiple, when it's one size, you can cut it. But if it's not, I what I do, I don't like cutting because then I'll ruin it and no one else can use it unless they're the same size that I'm using. So what I do is I trace it. So I have a carbon paper, which is proper for sewing, which is this one. And then I have paper and then I just trace the patterns or every piece on my own paper so I can use later, and I also don't ruin the, the original sheet of, of uh, paper, okay? And then that's what I've, and then I did that step already to save time, so otherwise we'll be here all night, right? Here is the, um, uh, my pattern then. I traced it on this paper and I cut it, and so we have all the pieces here that we can just cut the fabric with it. Right, so and then I'll, I'll show you just real quick which the, which pieces are. If you if you want to get this pattern, I looked up online. I think Joanne's still have it. Still have the same, and also on eBay and other places you can find the same one if you want to do. Okay, um, so basically it's a bunch of little pieces because they for some reason they made. I mean I know why it's to to be like it's not really reglan. It's like a different kind of style of. Um, leave and like a yoke so uh yeah that's why they they cut in, in different pieces right so like the yoke has they cut the sleeves in two parts so there's the sleeve the upper sleeve and then uh the front and the back and then there's the bottom a part of the sleeve which is like this big one and then uh the yoke so yoke um the i guess this is the front and this is the back and then this is the elastic guide, which I never really cut the pattern, but just for you guys, I did today. When there's elastic guide, I usually just measure the length and that's it. And then the ruffle, which I also usually just measure and do whatever I have, but let's follow the, the, the pattern today. And there's gotta cut four on a fold. And then the two parts of the body of the dress, which are the front and the back. Okay, so then, um, I'm gonna start cutting my fabric now. Let me just uh, put everything in place here so it don't get too messy. And then we gotta start it. Hi, Ebony. <laughs> I so Ebony. I have. Thank you for coming. I have. It's um. It's there. I can't go there because of my microphone. But it's. I really buy like a large uh, uh, art supply store is like a canson uh, large sheet uh, block or i have one i have close to me here is this one i got a staple 
that it's uh, for it's on the um, poster part of Staples that section. And then they have this was like six dollars, five or six dollars. This one is great. It's just not very wide, but you can always tape it together. All right, so this is my uh, ironing thing. That's very handy because I can put um, on the side and then grab it in a minute. And then the pattern, the fabric. So my table is like not very wide. Okay, guys, so don't don't judge, <laughs> but I'll do what I can. Um, for, so it's most of the pattern is cut on fold. I hope this one fits. This fabric is kind of narrow. Let's see. It does. Oh, yeah. Oh, it almost, it barely fits, but it, it's going to be fine. Okay, so my thing is moved, huh? So I'm going to fold very nice, nicely here. Drop the mouse. Technical issues. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I need the mouse so I can see what's going on there. There. Okay. Bear with me. I'll be right back. All right. So. First, I'm going to cut the back. And obviously, I should be tracing on the wrong side, right? Just so it doesn't get messed up. I thought of cutting it before the class, but then it wouldn't you wouldn't see, so <laughs> Oh, that might be, oh, that's cool that it's on the Cynthia Rowley. Oh, that's good. I noticed that, I thought it was so current, but then it was in the sale bin, and then I looked up, it's kind of, I think it's from 2017 or 16. And I thought, you know, one thing I was thinking is it's kind of short, so I would make the ruffles longer. If Then it would need more fabric, but I think it's worth it. If you're in like a long dress or even because this girl is like above her knee and I think she's probably tall the model right but um, I don't want to wear like that <laughs> especially in the fall like it's cold I don't know okay so It's missing a little here, but I'll make it. I'll make it work. Otherwise, in that case, see how it's a little. I'm gonna cheat, okay? Like you know me, I cheat. <laughs> but uh, if if it doesn't fit, if the front is too wide, then I'll do um, a cross instead of doing long ways. I'll do a cross. But this should be okay because it's not gonna change the the cut of the dress really. Can you guys see there? Here. There it is. You know, if it's if it was the yoke, for instance, I wouldn't cheat on the size. But since it's uh, this part that it's kind of, um, it doesn't really matter how wide the skirt is because the only thing it's going to be matched to is the ruffle part. So it'll be totally fine. So traced. It's important to have the notches marked, especially the top part of this dress because there's so many pieces. All right. 
so I'm going to cut this one. Look, and then here where I'm cheating, I'm just going to make like a line that goes all the way up there. Here. And nobody will know. If you guys don't tell anyone. <laughs> Cynthia Rowley. My notch before I forget. And then just... One thing I realize is, um, thank you, Ebony. <laughs> it's that instructions are confusing, right, for, for patterns. I don't know if it's because English is not my first language, but every time I'm seeing, I'm like, oh my God. I usually just figure out my the way I like to make. Okay, so this is the back. It's cut. Now I'm going to cut the front and I think the front is not going to fit. Put the little pattern here. Let me cut the yoke. So then there is less volume, fabric volume on the table. So let's see. Yoke front, yoke back, and they're all fold. And this pattern, uh, this fabric pattern is, it goes both ways, up and down, so I can, I don't have to worry about the position of the print. And I'll just place on fold here. And then I got the other ones that are not on fold. And here's the thing, the pattern tells that's another thing I'm going to do that's not conventional and it's not what the pattern tell me, but I just want to tell you. The yo the top part of this dress is doubled, so there's a lining and there's the, the shell, right? I don't, I don't like lining, <laughs> so I'm not going to do lining. I'm going to do a, um, what do you call, bias tape. So that's why I'm not going to cut four, because you're supposed to cut four of each. If you do one, I'll do the lining, I, which I think is even easier to do the finishing, you have to cut four of each, so follow the instructions correctly. I'm just not a fan of uh, doubled nothing in, in clothing. I like one thing. And here I'm going to pin it. Because in that case, it has to be more precise, and then I like pinning it. Make, oh, this is not, just got to respect the grain line. Okay, then I'll trace it. Patterns are confusing. <laughs> It's great. It's not actually. They are not, but they make the instructions in a way that's like, I don't know. I feel like Vogue is a little better. Uh, but it's really better if you figure it out on your own because then you learn too. One thing I always have issue with commercial patterns is because I'm not used to do as as wide uh, um, seam allowance like they do. They do five eighths of an inch, and I usually do like one centimeter, which is like I guess I guess one is like half of that or even less. I think five eighths of an inch is like one centimeter and a half. So. And that, you know, you think doesn't matter much, but it adds up if you're so if you sew the whole piece with a wrong seam allowance, it's not gonna uh, end up well. 
So I always have to pay attention. That. Yes, that, that is. I actually, uh, Ebony, the same allowance is, allowance is included, and it's 5 eighths. I made sure to check it because I've made mistakes before to not. It's funny how I was talking about that and you too, right? <laughs> okay, so there it is. And I just transfer my pin. I like pinning on the table like that because then it doesn't... It doesn't move when I'm cutting. Just making sure this one. Okay. All right. That I think is the one that takes longer. So, oh, this one. And then the other thing I do when I'm cutting like patterns that are a bunch of pieces like that, I keep them with the, when I cut the fabric, I keep them with the paper pattern, each piece, so you see, so then I don't get confused. Because I do get confused a lot, and I, then I have to redo it, and it makes me crazy. <laughs> so, that one here. Look, I just keep it together like that. I think in factories they do that too, if I'm not wrong. They keep the top, you know how they cut with the, like with a knife, they place a bunch of layers of fabric and then they put the pattern on top, cut it, everything with a knife, and then keep that paper on top too. Just as a guide so you know what it is. Do you usually do uh, commercial patterns? How do you usually sew? I think in the US, most, most ladies use commercial patterns, right? Because there are so many available. I went to that store where I got a bunch of fabric. Is that the one? Yeah. Um, they have, hi, Teresa. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you, Teresa. You being with me for a long time, huh? <laughs> awesome. I forgot to post on Facebook. Guys, if you can, please share the live uh, with your friends because I forgot. I just sent the email, but I didn't share anywhere else. Here. Yeah, so I went to shop into the store in New Hampshire. That's amazing. The guy sells like so many old fabric and new fabric and everything. And one thing he has a lot is, uh, it's called Frank's. He has patterns, patterns, pa I think like he bought zillions of patterns back in the 90s or something. And he has boxes of patterns. I was like, I could spend all day there looking <laughs> through those, those patterns. If you are ever in New Hampshire, go and visit this guy. Ask me, I'll tell you where it is. It's amazing. And it's not about, you know, he keeps getting new stuff because he, if like a store would do close out, for instance, he'll go and buy everything and sell at his store. It's been 50 years that he has that shop. And there's all sorts of dreams and notions and all stuff. And he's there working in, uh, in the counter. He cuts every single piece of fabric. Okay, so the yoke, the yoke is ready. Now we gotta do the sleeve and the front. So I'm gonna do the sleeve first. I mean the bottom sleeve, right? The bottom part of the sleeve. Ha, <laughs> awesome. 
Oh, Mood. Yeah, I know, but that. Hi, Zahara. Hey, where are you uh, watching from? Uh, no, the Mood Ebony. I was there last year. That was a throwback. It was like, a, you know, Instagram has like the memories, like Facebook. And it was the day I was a Mood in person. Uh, I can't. I'm going to New York soon, but I don't want to go to Mood because it's all closed. I don't want to be in there with uh, those people and COVID and whatever. I wish. They sell online, but it's not the same. No, wait. This is the... Yeah, this sleeve is kind of long. Yeah, I hope my fabric is enough. If it's not enough, I will just leave the... the rough of her later or something. Okay, guys? Because I calculated, I thought it was... I think it could be fine. Let's see. Before I say anything. Doesn't hurt to be economical here. All right. I need a bigger table, that's the reality. But I didn't want to bring my own table from New York here. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Mood is incredible, but it's expensive. It's not, you know. The good thing about Mood, I shop at Mood when someone orders something from me, uh, like a custom, and then I know that I can count on the... Uh, I can count on like that they have that fabric again if I need some extra or something. But uh, or like if I'm around there shopping and then I go just to browse because you can spend like a million dollars there in five minutes if you don't be careful. And there, if you're in New York, there are other stores that will be cheaper with similar stuff because mood is like fancy and famous and stuff. But it's definitely amazing. Okay. Oh, there is one thing here that I don't want to miss. And then I use the owl. Look, guys, I learned the name of this thing. <laughs> it's the whole punch, right? But it's owl. And so these are these leaves. You know how these leaves in the bottom are like open and there's a name for that kind of sleeve. Yeah, project I feel like Project Runaway is what hyped mood up because then everyone likes it. it's cool. Like the other day I was I mean last time when I went there, probably January or something, I don't know. Um I noticed that they have they open it because used to, used to be just upstairs. And then recently they opened uh, like a front, a storefront on the bottom. And it has like, um, it's but it's only for the core. And it's amazing. You see like the most amazing velvets and stuff for everything you want for the house. It's really impressive. And it's quality stuff, right? So that's good. This should have one notch because it's the front. Okay, so now it's just the front and the ruffle. fits so we'll, we'll be fine <laughs> it 
Is there even Project Runaways 2 lately? I don't know. I used to watch all of them. I love it. cheating there as well real quick the notch all right Yeah, fabric decor. There's a whole store. It's almost like a block. I mean, it goes from one street to the other, and it's all fabric. They used to have one, because, you know, there are a few, I think it's three or four floors of fabric. And one of the floors used to be only the core. And then now they opened this, like, street store. I mean, now I don't know how it is, but it was like that last time it's also cool because they have the people who work there are cool they there's you know because of the school fashion schools in new york there's they hire all the students there and the students are excited and they like the stuff and it's kind of fun to just uh you know talk to them because they're they have like a fun approach to the whole thing. So I might, so I need four of these. It would be perfect. Ah. I guys, because I either, I'm like that fabric, I was thinking that one has a bunch, but I didn't know it was narrow. I forgot how narrow it was. And then I was like, let me, I I just opened like I thought, like there's three yards. So <laughs> I'm glad I'm not making the, the double, you know, what do you call it? Line stop, because then it wouldn't be enough. I would have to use another fabric for lining. Okay. So here I'm just going to do like this. And it's a little shorter, but it's okay because it's um it's gathering, right? It works. And here ah, almost almost It's risky. Sewing is not safe. <laughs> is it working there? Yeah. And then you can do shorter. So I would like to do this part. I would double the length of this. If you want to make this pattern for real and, and you don't like shorts like there, like the one on the picture. You can double the length of the this, and I think even the design, I don't want to say anything Santa Raleigh designed, but I think when the ruffle is longer, it's cooler. I like better. Okay, so we have all the parts. Oh, one thing, I'm just gonna cut the little piece of kind of a bias. Where's my ruler? Here. I don't have enough material, so I'm gonna cut as better as I can. So 
just a little bias tape. You can use also use, you know, just uh, store bought bias that works. And then it's like I'm gonna do like about an inch. And that's that's the width that I'm comfortable uh, with when I sew. You can do more, you know, wider if you want. And that is if you don't want to do the line stop. But you can also just do the line. One there. I think two works, but I'm going to cut three. Just to be safe. Ideally, it would be one piece, right? So there's no, like, mending, but that's what we got. Okay, and the regular scissors. Oh, and then we gotta cut the elastic, but that's quick. Next time we do a commercial pattern, I promise I'll cut the fabric before, okay guys? So you don't have to. I think last year I did like that. I did like a heel, um, it was a dress and I did one class that was cutting, tracing and cutting and then the sec and then I did the second part where I sewed the dress. Then I don't get overwhelmed. Rob, Rob has a request. Oh, a pillow, I'm saving scraps, Rob. We can make a pillow for sure. I actually just started yesterday a little bag from the serger and uh, and whatever is like fluffy and nice. Okay, we'll have a pillow. <laughs> you can sew yourself if you want. Okay, guys, so I have every every piece. Uh, I'm gonna cut the elastic and then we can start sewing, which is a fun part. The big pieces I don't, I'm not gonna keep with the, fa the pattern because I know, and it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just gonna place on the side here in my crazy corner and then the elastic let me just organize this I think my mom is watching too okay so this is the pattern and then the elastic where's my elastic here so basically just uh, cut the length of the guide, right? That's easy. Oops. And then try to not lose it. <laughs> I'll put here with my yarn and then we can start sewing. Yay! Oh, this also I don't want to lose. And then I'm going to start from uh, the yoke. Because then there's the shape of the top already and you can see how the left is, the, the rest. Put my ironing thing back. And I'm going to use just white thread because I don't have that baby pink. And it'll be fine, I think. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I use the tracing wheel when I'm tracing the... I put it here to show you guys, but you probably know, right? So, Betty, you have a question. Hi. Oh yes, we can. I, I can do that. Thank you for... I always like when you guys tell me what you want to watch. I'm, I'll definitely do that. A basic just stop or something, right? You mean like a sloper or just a simple shirt? Can you see the machine? Let me put it here. So guys, here's the thing. I was uh, looking at the thing so I kind of understood, I think I understood how it goes. And uh, so if the notches help a lot. That's why I was very worried about them. So it's the yoke, right? That will be like the, the middle front or middle back of the piece. 
So that's the yoke back. And then I'll take the upper sleeve back and match with it, right? So it'll be the two notches here. And then there's two notches here. So then I'll just spin it here. And then here, right sides together. Put on the side and then grab the front yoke, yoke front. And then match the upper sleeve front, which also has a notch, then it's one notch. And that should go, this one goes on one side and this other one goes here. And then I pin it this one and I'm going to start this, sewing this one. Yeah, it has uh, two separated notches actually. And then 5 8 uh, seam allowance and let's do it. And then you just join, uh, join the two parts and then join them together. I recommend if you're going to do this pattern, do something, if you have like your fashion fabric, just use some muslin before so you know how it's going to look before you ruin your fabric. <laughs> It's easy, it's not hard, but I don't know, you know, let's see how it looks. I'm a little insecure. <laughs> Okay, so then we have the two, the two parts of the yoke, and then I'm gonna join them together, right here. And that the side is the sleeve, the top part of the sleeve. It's taking shape then I'm gonna press one thing I don't do when I'm sewing I've never done it is uh, basting and I think it's great but I, I don't do it but you know you can always baste and see how it looks I see in the patterns I remember that because I was reading the pattern uh, directions and it says baste and I'm like if I base I'll not, I'll not fin I'm never gonna finish but if you're a beginner it's good to baste and then you see how it goes and you don't get worried with the machine and stuff. A house dress, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I kind of dress as a house dress most of the time, but <laughs> I call it avant-garde. <laughs> you know, this like I got it, the fabric, I mean, because like the, this fabric I got at the thrift store and it was cheap. It's not even about the price sometimes, right? Because sometimes I find stuff at the thrift store I treasure for my, the rest of my life. But this one I didn't treasure much, so I don't mind if it turns out weird. But the linen that I buy yardage that I already washed it and stuff, it's... Uh, I don't want to ruin it. Although black, I think if you make this dress in black, it'll be good regardless. 
look, now it's nice. You can tell the front and the back, look. Cute. Then now you gotta join the bottom part of the sleeves to the body of the, the, the dress. So, this is one part of the body. And then, and this is the other one, and this is the sleeve. So you see how it has the arm, it's like half of the arm's eye here, right? And then the half of the arm's eye on the sleeve as well. I just have to find the notch. I think I forgot that one, so that means it's the front, <laughs> because I remember the, the front didn't have. And then that's the back. So let me place here so you understand what it is. That would be here. This is the, the body. And then the sleeve, when you fold it, will go here, like that. Okay, so if that has one notch and the other one has, yeah, so that's the back, this is not the right one. Just match the notches. And I don't know if you know that, but usually on uh, armhole, when there's two notches, that means the back part of the sleeve. It's like a, a standard thing. So I'm gonna join this two together. And then that part to the front, okay? But first I'm gonna do, do the both sides of this back and then I'll do the front. I, I love the thrift stores too, Ebony. And did you get the... I thought about you the other day because I went to Salvation Army here and I saw a bunch of scar silk scarves and they were all see-through and I thought about you. Did you end up getting any? Okay, so then the other one, this is the, yes, so the two notches I'm matching with this arm side here, I hope it's right, I think it is, yeah. So then, now I need to join to the front. And then you understand how the shape looks like. Looks like a mumu so far before you gathered. <laughs> Just have to make sure that it doesn't twist, right? Because then you have to take it down, take it apart. There. I haven't found any nice scarves. Yeah. It's like a hit or miss. Sometimes you're going to see a bunch. I feel like thrift store, sometimes somebody donates a bunch and then you're lucky to be there that day. Keep looking, you'll find it. And that also, honestly, like that dress, you can make from pieces of, any pieces of this. If you go to the plus size on the thrift store, they have silk skirts and silk jackets and then you just cut them apart. Or just piece a bunch of small together. Even like children's clothes, I like to piece it together to make one thing. It's kind of cool. Everything's possible. So this is a shirt. <laughs> and um, now I'm, you know, the next step would be to add the this to the top part of the top part of the top, right? But I'm gonna do the finishing of the top first. The arm, the, the collar. 
uh, instead, because then otherwise there's too much material to work with. It's easier if it's just this little part, okay? And that's when the bias tape comes in. So basically I'm gonna just finish here, uh, add the bias tape and the elastic like the, the pattern does. And so if you're doing exactly how the pattern tells you, you just, at this point, you'd have a, two pieces of this and would just like sew two sides uh, together, right sides together and flip it, iron it, and then add the elastic. But I'm just gonna do the bias tape. First, I'm gonna join the bias tape, so make it longer. And like the way I do bias tape, I attach bias tape to pieces, it's just how I learned with my mom. And I, all my clothing, when I'm sewing them, that's how I finish them. I'm, I'm used to this system. It might be hard for you, so don't, you know. Uh, you could also just fold it, just like hem this. Also works, but I like the bias tape system. That's why I always do it, but you know, don't be afraid. Then you gotta iron it to make it nice. I gotta press the top as well. Okay, so now, I don't know if you've ever seen me doing this, I'll do, uh, what I do is I attach the right sides together and then I flip it inside. So I'm gonna start, but then here's the thing, the elastic, what the directions are, uh, they tell you is that the goal is to have this elastic on the front here. Let me show you the pattern so you understand. You see how it's very gathered on uh, the, here, right? It's like up there. So then there, there's elastic in the middle front and the middle back. And that's, uh, and so, and if you, they tell you to have the two sides, the lining, and then you put the elastic in between the two parts. But I'm just gonna do the, the bias and then add the elastic inside. Similar to what they do, but with the bias. And then I'm gonna start the bias from the back. So if it looks a little messed up, it's on the back. <laughs> I'm sorry that my camera is a little funny. Rob, if you're watching, are you seeing how it is? I think something is funny. Yeah, I think the bias, and then it's too hot with the double. I don't know. I'm gonna focus, on, I'm gonna do things with lining eventually, but so far I have, I'm not very, King of it. So, and then how I do bias, I usually just go all the way. I leave a little left, like a little extra. I, I don't start from the top, from the point, like the edge. I just leave a little extra here and then I go. When I'm like a couple of inches from closing the circle. I, um, see, I left those two ones, so the, you know, both edges, so then I can know exactly how much I, I need here, and then I find this spot and put a pin, and that's where I close the bias. That's the way I figured out by myself to know how to do that, because I was always like, I don't like when it's over, 
what do you call if you fold it first and then come with the second one on top it's just like too bulky so that's how I like to do then trim very close there and then finish the and then it's the right size the right length and then now I gotta press again <laughs> because my life is with the iron um, I like to open the seam I'm gonna trim where there's extra here just to avoid bulkiness you know if you have extra time if I wasn't live I would like trim everything and be very slow because I don't want to bore you and then open the seam it's not really opening the seam it's just to gain because look like how it's weird and then if you iron it it's nice and smooth and when you fold it's better see it makes it easier I think next class if you guys don't have any require requirements I will do like a uh, upcycling again because it's fun right <laughs> it you can also do upcycling with a commercial pattern that's awesome just take stuff apart even this dress it could be make made with uh, men's shirts for summer you can do with flannels for uh, fall just get a bunch of flannels and then piece them apart and and then cut all these pieces one from each flannel and then it's great so look it's even nice if it's like that if it was uh, finished right but now I'm gonna fold it you know finish inside and then add the elastic that's the, the goal <clears throat> so I just gotta find So this is my back here and then I got the longer elastic I'm gonna attach the elastic there first just do a couple of stitches to lock it in and then I'm doing this little stitches on both edges of the elastic So then I know it's in place and then I can just fold the in fact I'm gonna do both elastics now so then I, I can just finish the bias at once I'm attaching them here and now the front I hope I put in the right side right place yes it is and then the front which is this little small one placing the elastic right here I kind of need a third camera so you can see the close-up of the stitching right escape and cut it And now I'll fold the bias over and 
and then just do the top stitch. Be being very careful to not uh, stitch the elastic because otherwise you'll mess up the whole. It has to be sp evenly spread, right? So if I if I stitch over now, it will like knock it, and it's not good. And as I go, I stretch the elastic. You know how you do like how would you do how you would do a waist band if you have elastic. It's a little tricky, but it's not impossible. And you can always spin it before or just like press it in place. cute this fabric I was talking bad on it but it's not so bad <laughs> have you ever done a recycle with sweater material sweater oh like wool knit no I don't think so you know I never I had a serger like we talk about serger right like I had a I have an old one that wouldn't make it I guess that's why I never tried and when I had a commercial one I didn't use much and now I have this good one so I might try something but it has to be thin right because if it's too thick it's hard to sew I'll try next time I go thrifting I'll I'll find I just made a, a patchwork dress with t-shirts and I was gonna post today but then it was dark because it's like cloudy Tomorrow, I'll take a picture and post it. You'll see. It's kind of cool. Kind of like fall colors. And then I have like colorful. And then uh, I should probably try a sweater. You're right. I'll, I'll find. There's a, stop, a store nearby here that they sell by pound or by the, by the bag, not by pound. So it's like you fill a bag for... There's two stores. One is a dollar and the other one is two dollars. But they don't open like regularly you know you've got to be lucky when they're open so especially now with the thing but if i catch them open i'll try to see if they have the cool sweaters usually those men v-necks would be good if it would, it would be nice if it was cashmere right oh i did you know <laughs> when i first moved to new york that was in 2007 i think and I did like gigs for, you know, I would offer, I would post like sewing gigs on Craigslist. This guy hired me. It was a guy in the East Village. He hired me to make, he had a bunch of um, cashmere sweaters that had like holes, you know, that was eaten by moth. And then he wanted me to make a blanket and I made, it was so beautiful. I had forgotten about that. And he was so amazed. He was like, wow, because I guess he was like, out of Craigslist, how could you? And it was really, you know, I played with the colors and it was really nice. It was all like pastel colors. I wish I had a picture of that. Okay, so this is my top. It's kind of cool. I would change that if I could because it's kind of like, see, I think if you press it would be nicer. But honestly, I don't find necessary to have this gathering here as well. So one thing I would do probably, if I would do this for myself, I would cut, reduce this amount here and not have gathering at the collar. But it's cool. So next step, what time is it? We're reaching one hour. I'm going to keep going. If you guys don't, if you get tired, you can just watch later. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, by the bag. It's a good wheel, but not... 
You know, in small towns, you find stuff like that. Ca but then cashmere now, if you look, I was at the store the other day, a bigger store, and then they had cashmere, but the cashmere is like $15 a cashmere, a sweater. I'm not going to cut those because then it's going to be a million dollars. So now, guys, the next step is to add this big piece to the top, right? And that's when the gathering starts. First, I'm going to press the seam open. And this you could do serger or zigzag if you don't want to have all this amount of fabric hanging out in the inside of the shirt or the dress. You can trim it because it's like 5 eighths is a lot. But you know, you can always trim the, the extra fabric. Hi, Alexis. I go thrifting everywhere. I'm a thrifter professional. <laughs> I love thrifting. It's my favorite thing. Even like on my birthday, I'll go thrifting. If somebody asks me, what is your favorite thing? I love the find the treasure finding. The only place I don't go much is Goodwill because of their prices and because of their stuff that you probably know. Um, you know, how they, how they don't pay the people and stuff. So I like I like Salvation Army a lot and and small stores. The best stores are small. Um, here in New Hampshire, I'm in Central Vermont, and then we go to the uh, New Hampshire stores, the Listen Center, which is a, is not cheap, but they have cool stuff. They don't have a lot of cool clothing, but they have cool objects, sewing machines, and uh, so I just try to go everywhere, you know, when I can. But the ones nearby here are tiny the church ones are good if you have in your in your area so now i'm gonna use the yarn to do the gathering okay so because see how this you know this is huge right compared to this so we got to reduce this amount so what i'm gonna do is i have to find where my notches are because when you gather it just gets harder to find the notches and that's how i'm gonna be able to match the pieces right so I know this is the front because I, from the notches here, I remember, and that's the back. This is the back and this is the front. So that's wrong. So that should be like this. And after I gather this, I got to match the notches. And I know that the seam is going to be together. And then there's one notch here. So I'm going to put a pin in order to not lose the notch after gathered. And in the back, where's the other one? I guess the back doesn't have... I forgot to cut. See? <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to find the center. At least I have some kind of guidance. Because since it's like... Uh, you know, it's large, right? So you want to have... It has to be evenly spread, the amount of... Gathering to, to the other eyes is like wonky. It will be like all oh, gather to one side and that it's not going to look good. So then I found the center back here and I'm going to find the center back on my yoke. Is that so? Hold on, guys. Because it has... No, that's right. I forgot to... To mark here that's the thing you know the easiest thing to do is to grab my pattern right go back oh yeah I didn't cut the notch that's the thing so should be here and then here it doesn't need to be super accurate, but at least we have some sort of reference. Okay, so that's that, and that's here. 
Then I'm going to do the gathering. I don't know if you are familiar with this method, which I didn't use to do it, but I learned and it's amazing. It saves like so much time. You just stitch the yarn all around the edge of the fabric. And then you pull it. So zigzag. I go to the widest zigzag. I put the widest uh, width and then also the long length. So it's just easy to pull, uh, pull it out later. And then attach and then sew the yarn there. Oh, your knees. <laughs> Oh, you never saw them before. I'm sorry, Alexis. There is a class that I did for total beginners. I think it's like two, number six or something on YouTube there, on my channel. Check it out and watch it because then you can get uh, pick it up. I actually even edit that, that class and I'm going to post somewhere eventually with, you know, because when it's live, I keep talking like now. But um you can just, you know, you can also move forward when you, you know, when you're watching. But I added it to make it easier. But if you watch that one, I, I teach how to, it's for people who only have a sewing machine and never even started. So you might like it. <laughs> but thank you for joining anyway. Okay, so I got the zigzag. And then I'm going to stitch all over the whole circle of the, the stuff. It's not good to sew over the, the pin, by the way, okay, guys? <laughs> and try to keep the yarn on the edge of the thing, so then it doesn't complicate you when you're attaching the gathered piece to the other part. Oh, I'm oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Alexis. <laughs> Yeah, so I used to, I, I still do it, but I used to have a shop in New York and I uh, had two stores in New York. And that's the, my main uh, work is to do upcycling. And we call upcycling when you get something old and transform that into something new. And that's my favorite thing to do. And that's why I like thrifting so much because I find uh, a lot of amazing materials there that people just donated, you know, silk, linen, really quality. The piece used to be very expensive and they donated. And so there's a fabric go going to waste. And so I like to uh, save that and then make something new. Sometimes accidentally you might stitch over the yarn, but don't worry because you can always cut the thread. If you stitch over the yarn, just snip it and it will still gather. See, I just missed it. So I'm just gonna cut it here and go back there.
and I'm approaching the end and then we're gonna have fun because that part is amazing <laughs> okay so now I have that and look I'm gonna pull the pull the yarn and then gather the piece be careful to not stab yourself with the pins Oh, you are in New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. My friends live here. We came, me and my husband, we came uh, to Vermont in March. But then we usually go to New Hampshire to like uh, to get food and stuff. So it's like Lebanon is the, the, clo is the biggest town nearby. So I just gathered a little like that. Oh God, I lost the pen. <laughs> but then, you see how the top is like a little uh, closer, you know, the side, the, the length is closer, even smaller now. So then I just have to spread. Yeah, the pin jumped. Oh wait, you didn't want to be with me. This one's here, the other one's not. That's okay. So then I got a, I, I just spread a little bit to be even. And then now is the time that I have to find the notches and match them. And then I'll pin them together before I sew. So um, I got to figure out which one's the front. This is the front and this is the front. So it's in the same position. I know that the two seams here should match the two seams here. So then that's a, a good starting point. I put it there and then I pin it. Where's my pin? Right, so that, and then this one. Right here. And then you can see that this is now like the top is too big, so I just spread a little more. And then there's the notch. I can also match this right now and pin it. And then I gotta find the other notch. Here it is. And that's that. So you see how important in this pattern is to have your notches, keep your notches together. <laughs> okay, so there it is. And as I sew, I can spread a little better. Now, the next one is the other seam. So then I have the seam on the sleeve and then the seam on the top. So I just match this and pin it. And then flip it over here. And then this notch that I have in my pin here, which was the drawing there that I did last minute. And then I'll pin it. Then I should have another one here. This is probably the one that went away. But I have the mark, so that with this one. And lastly is the seam. There's one more seam. I think that's in the middle here, right? Yeah, no, this is just spread, I think. Yeah. One seam here doesn't have a notch, so it should probably be the middle of this leaf. Basically, just have to spread towards uh, throughout the the top there. So that's that. Now I just have to make sure it's nice and you know evenly spread out. It's a little tricky because I had one long yarn, right? If you have, maybe it would be easier if I had done like a few different yarns. So then I could pull it on each spot.
but then I'm just gonna start sewing where I think it's ready. So this one I know has to be the whole It just needs to match here the same length and be like evenly spread. So that's good. I can start off. Put it back on straight stitch. And when we're sewing, every time I'm gathering, I do like this. You just put the needle down, holds it there, and then you can stretch the, the fabric together, two sides together, and then you, can, you have a better view of the amount of gather you have. So I got to my pin. One section is done. Then I'm moving on to the next one. And every time I gather skirts, dresses, I always do like by sections because it's easier. Otherwise, you go crazy with the amount of, uh, you know, volume of uh, material in your hands. It's like, whoa, whoa. slowly now is another section I have to actually stretch my gathering to fit the top and then spread and that's about this cut to this this pattern itself it's a uh, it's not evenly told, you know, it's by sex. Some parts are more gathered, some parts are less. It is what it is what it is. This one has to spread as well. Entering a big section now. <laughs> All right.
Yes, it's working. It's matching. Now I got to the end of, of my thing. I'm not, I don't cut it right away. I just cut it at the end, okay? Because it's when I pull it, the yarn. If you're watching the replay, feel free to ask questions if you have. Um, if you're alive also. <laughs> but I always come back and answer the questions uh, by hand. Or you can always message me on Instagram. My Instagram is vania.nyc. Vania.nyc. If you don't know my Instagram, just go. You can ask, uh, send me a DM. If you want to give suggestions, ask for classes, anything. Okay? My machine is acting up a little. And I'm approaching the, the last one, the last section. That's amazing. Hmm. Are you guys there? <laughs> My favorite machine, Rob, is... I don't have yet. <laughs> Rob is saying that because I have like 10 sewing machines. <laughs> no, I think my favorite sewing machine is this older singer that I have that I showed actually in the class, in the basic uh you know not basic the beginners class that's my favorite sewing machine currently but i might change my mind depends what i find so now i'm gonna pull the yarn out of the dress catch this look how easy is that oh and then you can also pull the zigzag you know later i can do that uh and can you believe it oh and then i gotta close the sides so this is the last thing I'm going to do today because it's, too, it's being too long. And then um, and the, I'll explain to you how to do the other part. And then I'll show, I'll finish on my own and then post on Instagram the, the final result. But because that's, that was the hardest part of the, the construction. That one is just the ruffle really. So then you just add a ruffle, that's it. I gotta show you guys my machines actually. I'm gonna do a. Unboxing. <laughs> Unboxing video. Okay, so that I closed the side, one side. I'm gonna do the other one now. And I think when I post this picture, I'll do black and white because this color is like. Which vintage singer song do you have? I just got a singer. Oh, really? I did get one that. So my friend Susan, who is crazy about thrifting, as crazy as I am, she, last week, two weeks ago, she showed up with an old sewing machine here. And she showed up with two sewing machines for me. And one was one of the, the, the knee paddle that I have never seen before. I'll send you a picture, you see. It's amazing. Is that, 
mine is from the 1920s. I think it's from 28 or something. My sister should be here answering those questions. She's a specialist. But my favorite is I I like those. I have oh, I have a bunch, Ebony. So the recently I've been buying more here in uh, thrift stores. But the one I have I have an old one that this guy I we, me and Rob we bought at the flea market in Massachusetts a few years ago. Probably like four or five years ago. It's an old singer. It has pedal, and the guy, the man who sold on it, sold until he was 95 years old. And that's the one I like, but the problem is it doesn't have a reverse, so I don't use it much. I only use if it's like some heavy duty, you know, if I'm gonna do leather or some thick denim, denim, then I will use that one. The one I like is this, I like the 90s singer. All the night, like, you know, the futuristic machines, That's those are the ones I like. Look, here's a piece. So I think that's it. It looks like a mumu. <laughs> okay, so then let me tell you how you do this just a real quick. If you're doing really making this pattern, you just add all this together, you know, sew them together. There are four pieces, you add them together and you do the yarn, the same thing. Pass the yarn through, pull it, and then match. Um, try to do like, because there are four, it would be like two in the front and two in the back. So you find the center front and the center back of the dress and then stitch the gathered uh, panels, you know, accordingly. So, Because the problem with gathering is when it's dressed like that, if it's if you gather too much on one side, the dress will like fall, you know, there will be too much material to one side or something. So you want to spread out evenly. Okay, let me do my whole full screen. And yeah, so I just don't want to be here f too long. I'm hungry. <laughs> and um, you can uh, message me if you have questions. Let me know what you want to see next. I probably, now that Eben is talking about uh, sweater upcycling, I might do that because it's exciting. And then, yeah, whatever you want to know, let me know. And thank you. Join the Telegram channel. I just post the link down there. And leave comments or questions if you have any. Thank you very much. I appreciate that you joined me today. Have a good night. <laughs>